right. And we're on. Bye. Joey Lavelle, thanks for coming back on the show. Thanks for having me on, man. Yes, uh, your first guest since I officially changed the name to Path Notes. So cool. I'm kind, honored, of a, kind of a milestone. Uh, so we're going to start off today with like how to get started um, with whether it's like the outdoor fitness or, or whatever. So like, how do you recommend people just get going on some of the stuff that we do? Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes uh, when I'm working with personal training clients, they ask me that, uh, how can I start to apply this stuff and start a practice outside? And usually what I say is you should go out and walk in the grass because it's a really easy starting point and you don't have any excuses not to do it because there's grass everywhere. And the reason I say to do that is because normally we're just walking on perfectly flat surfaces all the time. Uh, so if you're going to be going out in the woods and doing things like that, uh, you want to make sure that your legs are ready for it. Walking on hills, walking on maybe sideways on a hill where your ankle has to go you know, laterally a little bit. Uh, so that's one like easy entry point I give if somebody hasn't done anything. As I say, just go for a walk in the grass, uh, maybe not like a perfectly manicured grass out in a park or something like that, and and just start to do that and and see where it takes you. Maybe you see a log, and you start balancing on the log. It's pretty safe. It's only a foot or two up off the ground, um, and you can start to work on on getting better at balance. Yeah, that makes that makes sense to me. It was when we have this group. If you're in the Indianapolis area, um, you can join the Facebook group Indy Strength and Movement Community. So it's a group we started. It's been a couple of years now, and there's like a little over 100 people in it. But we get people that come out with us, and everybody has their own strength. So you're doing stuff that. I'm not able to do, I'm doing stuff that you're not doing. Right. Somebody else is doing something neither one of us can do. Right. There's like all these different levels. And I think some people like maybe want to join us, but they're not because they see some of our videos. Mm. We're 60 feet up in a tree. We're and they're like in, intimidated. And so like, if like, what would you say to the people that are thinking of, you know, not just in the Indianapolis area joining us, because most people that listen to the show are nowhere close to here. But what about, besides like the walking in the grass, like maybe getting a group of people together, like how, how do you think people can start? Like they don't want to just like go out to the woods by themselves. Maybe it's not their nature. Like I had um, Rosanna uh, Tejo on the show mm. and she's from Peru and she moved to New York City. And she wanted to she like connect back with her roots and nature, and so she like started this like, hiking club. And she's telling her friends about it, and, and like they don't even know what she means by hiking. And she, yeah. she's like, it's hard to believe. I think it's just like walking <laughs> through the woods. But there's some like this disconnect. So if like how would you like get over like that part? So they're going and they're they're walking through the grass and they see like sure. what about the like maybe how to get people together? Or, like, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically I would suggest going the social media route, um, namely cause it worked for me. That's how we met is mm -hmm. I just saw one of your Instagram videos and you're doing some bear crawls with your class. And I was like, but also some other animal type crawls that you don't see. And that made me think, Hey, like this guy is, is on the same path as me. He's trying to like expand his movement in, in different directions. And he's not afraid to defy like normal fitness paradigms. Um, so I suggest, you know, starting a Facebook group if it doesn't already exist in your city uh, and include some kind of term like movements or physical culture uh, in the name of the city. So art is indie strength and movements. Um, and what that does is if people are looking for a more generalist perspective, um, like we're doing at these meetups, then they're going to be looking for those key terms like like movement culture from the Ida Portal method or physical culture is another term or maybe evolve, move, play from Rafe Kelly's work. Um, include some of these buzz terms in your Facebook group. That way it comes up. Uh, and beyond that, 
you know, if you know somebody who grew up out in the country or in the woods, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, I, I want to learn about this. Uh, would you mind going on a walk in the woods with me? Maybe they can um, point out a few different kinds of plants or trees or, or just at least make you feel comfortable to go out in the woods. Like, hey, this isn't a scary place. It's a place where you can learn things and explore. Uh, so that's what I'd recommend. Yeah, it's interesting because like both of us grew up um, climbing in the woods, doing just like you see something you want to climb and you climb it. You climb. see something you yeah. want to like balance on, you just you just do it. Hmm. And it's like it's such a natural thing. I think once people kind of get into it, sure. then they'll start like, oh, this is, this is in this is in my DNA. This is hmm. they start to climb a tree and like, okay. You don't have to read a manual, although there is instructions, which I think we should get into our program uh, later on. I think it's sure. okay to start talking about it, but there's just like something that there's something about climbing that tree that feels like really natural, like ancient, this, this primal thing. And people will, like we were talking the other day, like, I'll maybe climb as high as you, but you're a better climber. You'll, you can do different transitions that I'm not doing. And um, that, so there's like this amount of like risk taking. Hmm. And I guess like that, that's kind of, maybe that's part of the thing. Like out when we're out there and sometimes there's like several of us and like, sure. huh, I think I'm going to, do this like I was talking about running and doing a, a jump off this wall and then do a roll out and you're like no <laughs> right and then so I was like oh I think I'll do this progression you're like okay that's cool that makes sense it's like sometimes you, like uh, or you were talking about doing something and then like Eve and Ethan were telling you no you're not going to do that <laughs> and then they yeah. I was like what and then they told me I don't even remember what it was but it was <laughs> I was like no that's don't do that man. Nah. <laughs> So what about like, like the, the risk taking? Cause the, there is uh, a risk. Like when, when we were at white pine the other day and they're like, we're over there, me, you and Richie and we're climbing around on the, the monkey bars and stuff. And this other guy comes over and he's, I don't know, maybe 40 and uh, he's going across the monkey bars. He, he, and he ends up wiping out his legs hit the, uh, <laughs> yeah the slack line yeah, and he yeah. falls and he's, he was fine. Sure. A little bit later, I'm doing a lache from one bar to the next. Yeah. Um, and I missed the bar. I landed flat on my back. I didn't yeah. hit my head. I've done enough martial art falling and stuff. Sure. So, but, I mean, it happens like it's so fast. There's no time to prepare. Your body's just going to do right. what you trained it to do. So I was yeah. able to fall properly. I didn't hit my head. Didn't even knock the wind out of me. But that bar is eight feet in the air. Yeah. So my hands like touched it, but they didn't quite get all the way around. Yeah. And I don't know exactly what it looked like, but I fell flat on my back. Yeah. It's like, what about like managing the, mm. the risk? Mm. So I think that's what yeah. like, people are like, oh, I don't want to get hurt or let me get in yeah. shape first. Let me lose 20 pounds and then I'll. Right, right. That's just an excuse when people say stuff like that. You know, lose that 20 pounds out in the woods, you know what better place to reconnect um, and to put yourself on a good, healthy weight loss journey than to get out in nature, uh, breathing the fresh air and, and being with friends. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as like trainers, I would always try and follow the Hippocratic Oath, which is do no harm, you know, because you, you don't want people to hurt themselves because it's going to set you back so much. Uh, it's, you know, it's not good for you as a trainer. You, you obviously, you care a lot about your client. You don't want anything to happen to them. Um, uh, but at the same time, like people love to do zero risk activities. They think that having no risk, like why risk it when I could do all these other things, get on a treadmill. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like oh, going out on the road where, you know, there might be a bump or a crack in the sidewalk or whatever. Uh, but the reality is we need the risks to be attentive. And if you want to get a new layer of focus um, in your mindset, you need to have some risk. Um, and part of that is like just beginning to take small risks 
things where if things go wrong, not only are you thinking about what can go wrong, but you also know what you're going to do and when to just not do something like, like, for example, if you're used to balancing on smaller objects, like, um, like a log, you know, maybe try like, like three feet up. So there's some risk. Yeah. If you fell from that height head first, it would suck. Um, but like, you're probably not going to completely invert in the three <laughs> feet down yeah. fall. Um, so I'd say, you know, progressive risks, just like anything in fitness. Like we don't put you into a, the splits. If it's your first time stretching your legs, mm-hmm. we're not going to, um, put 300 pounds on the bar the first time you deadlift. Um, it's the same with risk and mindset is like, uh, first you need to understand what you can do with your body. And then you start to play with the edges of your abilities. But like, you have to know yourself and we're obviously deep in the game. That's why we can take certain risks. But at the same time for me to jump, um, you know, from one rock to another, that's maybe seven feet away. This is something I can do every time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, so for me, it's, it's a calculated risk that's actually very small. Whereas somebody, um, who's not used to having their ankles loaded in uneven planes, And they're just used to flat floors, even if they can, you know, jump pretty well, if they're landing on it with two different angles, because on a rock, you know, one ankle, when you land, it's going to be at one angle and the other is going to be a different one because the rock's not uniform. They might not be used to that and they might sprain an ankle or, or hurt their Achilles tendon or something. Um, So for me, it's a tiny risk, but for somebody who's not acclimated, it's a huge risk. So uh, you got to be smart and take your time, but there's nothing like the woods to really build resiliency in your body. Um, would you say that it's helped you prevent some injuries to just be out in the woods and train? Yeah, I would imagine so. And part of it is uh, you're, it's not the same thing every time. So there's like some similar things or some similar patterns that you'll get while you're climbing a tree, but sure. no two, no two trees are the same. Right. So you're looking and you have to, is that branch going to hold me? It's not going to, if I'm 20 inches out, right. but if I'm, if I'm, if I can keep my foot, so it's touching the trunk, sure. I'm going to be fine. How do I know? How do you know? Mm. Yeah. So that's a weird one too. Like, how do you, how do you know? Yeah. Uh, but there's something in us that can like figure it out. I can assess, okay, it looks pretty rotten. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a weird thing without doing any kind of uh, scientific test you just look sure, at it sure. this branch will hold me in and you, you probably err on this the safe side as yeah. much as you can and even uh, are you talking about the the managed risks and the doing stuff that you you know you can do every time even professional lifters they're not maxing out every day no it's most of the time they're in this uh, may depend on what you're doing 70 80 percent sometimes hit 90 but if you go 100% every time, that's a recipe for disaster. It's harder to progress, sure. more likely to injure yourself. It's a lot more mental stress. Like I've never done this before again. But if you find yourself like hitting that 70, 80% mark, that mark uh, progresses on its own. Like, okay, you've done, you can do seven feet every time. Yeah. You know, you can right. jump seven feet. Right. Okay, now this is seven feet, three inches. Okay, yeah. that, that's cool. I, I can do that too. Sure. And then you get you that seven three is sure. becomes the seventy percent or whatever. Yeah. And then it's seven six, and then it's eight foot, and it, it's happening without you taking these like crazy risks. Yes, I hear you. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, definitely, definitely, just want to see people be be wise about it, but also you know, challenge yourself and do some, some amount of risk. Um, so for you, if that just means walking in the grass, then, then do that. Cause there's certainly people who I work with who that's like a big deal, you know, mm-hmm. if they're older or, or, you know, they immediately start talking about their old ankle sprains or their old knee injuries. And, and that's mm-hmm. another thing I know people worry about is like arch support. Uh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Arch yeah. support. <laughs> so, you know, we haven't really had anybody come out and like arch supports and knee braces and elbow pads yet, but you know, I don't think that stuff is, 
it's necessary to be so overly cautious. Um, and what we do, we're just, when we share it on media, it's just like the best, coolest kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. we're also just exploring movement in general. So sometimes we'll just do, you know, something small and goofy. Like we're just looking at a weird way to do a plank, mm -hmm. you know, between two objects or on an object. And it's super safe. Um, it's just a matter of like, can, can you, or can you not? And, and sometimes some people will try while other people watch. And sometimes everybody mm -hmm. jumps in and tries it, but there's never any pressure for everybody to get involved. And like, that's what makes, uh, the little tribe we have so special is like, um, we're not competing against each other, uh, but we all don't exactly have a common goal. We're mm -hmm. just all like hanging out with each other in the woods and what that does is it opens it up to, uh, for you to do what you want to do, but also feel supported by everyone around you. Yeah, that is what makes it fun. Like, Cause everybody has these different minds, these different ideas. And so I'll see you do something like, Oh, that's cool. I want to, I want to do that too. Something else you do. I'm like, there's, I'm not even going to bother with that. Yeah. That's not, <laughs> That's not what I want to do. So yesterday we went out to the woods. Like, how would you describe what we what we did yesterday? Ah, yeah. Um, I'd say meandering with puzzles included. <laughs> um, we just kind of we hiked through the woods and and at first we were just kind of like without like agreeing to do this. We were just looking for birds for a little bit. We just kind of walked through the woods. We both kind of naturally started walking a little quieter. And we were looking uh, for woodpeckers because we saw one fly across the path. Yeah. Um, and that was, and that was cool. That got me like tuned into the woods, got me out of the city mindset. Um, and then we, we found some vines. So uh, we decided to engage with the vines. So we got up there and uh, we both climbed on them a bit and, um, and, you know, warmed up our bodies and, uh, and just had fun up in the vines, man. I got engaged with, the environment like the, walking on the trail is cool uh bird watching is cool but like we want to actually be a part of the woods and, and that's what we do that's different from like hiking mm -hmm. is we're gonna walk off the path for a moment so that we can uh like have this like really palpable experience with the woods versus like on the trail like there's no bushes to step over. There's no sticks to really get in your way. There's no rocks to trip over. Um, and when you're climbing up a vine, uh, I mean, first of all, we're like, is this vine going to hold? Is that safe? And yeah, it was a really thick <laughs> vine. Mm -hmm. we, we decided it was safe. And then we were trying to figure out how to get up there. And we saw that limb wedged in between the crevice of the tree. And just like we were talking about, like we're, guessing whether or not can hold our weight because it's like a dead branch wedged in a tree uh so you got up there and, and we're real conservative you stayed close to the trunk which is like you being safe um and making a uh, calculated risk and then you started climbing on the vine <laughs> and uh and i got a cool a few cool pictures of you up there like uh and you're you're working out essentially up mm -hmm. on this vine that's shaking everywhere um, there's no guarantee that you're not going to fall off, but you also can hang on really well. Mm -hmm. um, so we just like immediately found a, um, an awareness challenge and then progressed that to a more physical strength challenge. Um, and then when we were done with that area, it was kind of just mutually agreed. It was like, it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. Let's migrate to the next spot. Uh, and that's what a lot of our meetups are like. Yeah, and then you start like balancing, doing one leg squats on the mm. one of the logs, and um, my knees weren't like feeling up to. I can do one leg squats, but sometimes my knees swell up a little bit, and I, it's not a good idea for me too because it feels like it's going to mm. bust the joint apart. But sure, and uh, yeah, it's like each section is is almost like its own little gym, or it's a yeah. it's a section of a different gym. You're in this. Okay, here's the vine climbing section, and then here's yeah. the rock lifting section, and here's <laughs> yeah. this um, real steep, I don't know how, how tall that was, probably less, not even 20 yeah. feet thing that we climbed, yeah. climbed down, and like, is this root going to hold me? Maybe. So if it doesn't, I have this 
plan B if yes. this thing busts. So I've had that happen before where yeah. a root broke and I'm pretty up high at, in Brown County and, yeah. you know, fall backwards down this rocky <laughs> <laughs> hill for a while. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's this interesting uh, like sort of thing, like what, what happens. You don't need like a book to – like instructions definitely help. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that – let's. so speaking of like the instructions, like mm-hmm. I think it's probably cool to talk about this program that we're doing in spring, you think? Cool. Like, yeah, definitely. So how, how would you describe what we're, what we're cooking for spring? Ah, sure. Uh, so what we're trying to do – is we'll have a very concentrated sessions uh, about uh, every other week is what we're talking about now uh, where we're going to meet up for a good chunk of time at least a couple hours and we'll give you um, some principles of of being involved with nature and in the movement sense Uh, so so the way we're talking about this is the protector pathway. That's what Matt Schull, the owner of White Pine, is is describing it as. Um, so basically, how to be able-bodied in a natural environment, so that um, not just for yourself, like what we do is fun, uh, but it's just you know for us. But this is more in a in a larger context. Like, how do you be useful as a human being in a natural setting, so that mm-hmm. you could help others. Um, and you're mobile, like it doesn't restrict you that you have to move up a hill or, or move over big rocks or, uh, or get to another place. So that way, um, like, let's say something bad happened when we were out in the woods, uh, if we needed somebody to go get help, any one of us could scramble away, uh, through the woods and get help much quicker than your average person could do, um, so that's that's the way I kind of see it. Uh, how do you look at it? Yeah, that and um, so like there may be a situation where I fall from the tree, I break yeah. my leg. Maybe it's better for you to leave me there and go get help, or maybe it's better for you to carry me out. Mm. So then uh, it's like part of this um, testing. I got this idea from this uh, martial arts teacher. He's more than a martial arts teacher can't remember his name, but it's the cave of Adelum in Detroit. This guy's an amazing teacher, but part of these kids tests, he, his focus is mainly on, uh, um, young black boys. And, uh, the part of their test, which is like an initiation into this school, there's spiritual tests, there's physical tests, and there's their martial arts techniques. And this guy's like just an amazing teacher. There's a lot of videos. Mm-hmm. Like part of the kid's test is after he's done with his spiritual test, his physical test, his martial arts test, he has to get on the back of his dad while his dad does push-ups. Sometimes dad's not there. So maybe it's stepdad. Maybe it's uncle. Maybe it's just his spiritual brothers at the class. So how hard is it to get on somebody's back while they're doing push-ups? It's pretty easy. All you have to do is, uh, you know, lay there. Yeah. But what he's, what he's trying to show is like, you're not alone. You have this, uh, these other men that are here for you. They're, um, they will work for you. They will show up. They will do these things. Mm -hmm. It's these super powerful videos. I'm barely even scratching the surface of how powerful this guy is. But so I was thinking, okay, I'm going to take his idea of that. And then part of our tests, because Matt wants there to be like tests and it's like a quest. And so I was like, okay, well maybe part of my test is you have to carry me a hundred yards. Super easy for me to just (laughs) drape over your shoulders. It might be uncomfortable hitting my guts, but it's going to be a lot harder for you than me. Yeah. Uh, but that's still part of my test is to know, like, so we'll see how we, we dial it in exactly to make it ours. So we're like, yeah. take taken from this guy's uh, idea and how do we make it ours? Sure. Um, but so there's that, you know, like stone lifting, so lifting stone carrying, 
log lifting, log carrying, um, uh, martial arts, you're doing uh, tree climbing. There's going to be like overlap. So there's three main instructors. Mm -hmm. We'll see what all uh, Matt does with it, but me, you, and Richie Todd. So Richie's main thing is going to be the martial arts. I'm going to do some of that too. My main thing is going to be the strength. Richie will do some of that too. Your main thing is the uh, climbing, but you'll also be doing strength stuff, movement stuff. Sure, It's it's all like this this overlap where each of us might have our specialty, but these overlaps. And so the whole idea is to give people this – it's supposed to be a big deal. It's it's not just like, Oh, I'm going to go to my, uh, you know, workout class from noon to one and um, burn some calories or or something like that. And it's it's supposed to be this like community thing. So maybe it's maybe a father and son thing. Maybe uh, mom brings her daughter or maybe husband and wife or whatever. Cause I see like team stuff happening. Sure. Like you're working together as a team. And so maybe, uh, uh, so mom is usually used to taking care of daughter, maybe daughter's 14, mom's 40 or whatever. So mom has been taking care of daughter this whole time, but there's going to be a, some point yeah. more than likely in their life where daughter is now the right. one in charge. Right. Daughter is making decisions. Daughter is the one taking care of mom. Hmm. That So uh, we're still working out details and, uh, there'll probably be like some surprises of what we do. Sure. But it should be this just really amazing program. We have three, you know, plus one. We'll see what Matt does. Um, Matt's like thinking up. He's given us his ideal, bouncing his ideal off of us, like the Southeast part of the eight shields model, um, which is in the archetype of the protector, which he is like, it's, it's his like vision and he picked us to um, so it's not just like me or not just you, not just Richie, e- either one of us can and has ran workshops yeah. where each one of us is perfectly capable by ourselves to do right. awesome stuff. But this combination is really cool. Heck and uh, yes, yeah, so I, I think we're shooting for March. Um, and yeah, yeah, like you said, probably every other Saturday, something like that for at least a couple hours and, uh, maybe it'll go for a few months. We're still ironing out all these details, but the idea is just like to get immersed into this thing where it's not just, Oh, I'm going to like tone my biceps up a little bit or uh, right. I need to lose five pounds right. or I need, it's like, you might, you, you probably will tone your biceps up. Yeah. You probably will lose the five sure, pounds sure. or, or maybe you, yeah. yeah, but it's, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a real big deal. And w- 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 the meetings that we've had, it seems like it's, uh, can't, can't lose on, yeah. on who yeah. we have and what we're doing. Everyone's got their head in the same place. It feels like, yeah. Uh, we all just want to make like, you know, like the term that people use sometimes is embodiment. Like we're trying to, to get you recognizing like what are some basic functions of your body and like, um, and then how do we tie that into who you are as a person? And just having this, um, this feeling of confidence in your natural environment um, is just so powerful. And it makes like, like there's nothing wrong with with making your biceps a little more toned or losing five pounds, and both of us totally agree. But uh, I think we also agree on, you know, what's the big picture? Where is it leading towards? What kind of person are you becoming as a result of that? Um, and how do the losing five pounds and making your biceps more toned? Where do those two things meet? Like how are they related to each other? And the answer is like this, uh, partially in this protector pathway where it's like, um, you know, you use your strength for others. And just like when you're out in the woods and you're doing something hard or, or you're doing a workout and you're doing something hard, uh, one thing that always keeps me motivated is um, when I'm too tired, I don't have enough energy to do more. I'm like, I'm going to do more now 
not using my energy, but like uh, the thought of other people that I care about. Mm -hmm. Like, cause there's going to come a time when, you know, maybe I just didn't happen to get sleep and I've been working all day and, and maybe a friend needs my help with something. Well, I want to be able to reach a little deeper and, and, and come out for that person. Like, yeah, your car's broken down. I'll, I'll come and pick you up. I'm really tired. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I feel like crap, but mm -hmm. like, I'm going to come pick you up. And the ability to go a little deeper and find that um, is really a powerful thing. And in my eyes, we're, we're showing you a way of getting there. Mm -hmm. um, being in the woods mm -hmm. and working on on some skills like log lifting or martial arts where there's a lot of self-discipline and um, and building of resilience in your body like you're definitely going to get healthier if you come to these workshops yeah and so if we're just meeting every other uh, Saturday which looks like the plan the idea is like you're gonna be implementing this stuff in at other times too, because yeah. you're not going to get the most awesome results doing right. this stuff every other week. I mean, right. there are some strength training programs where you can um, get results when you're almost doing a maximum amount every other week or every 10 days, like uh, maximum static contraction training and stuff like that. There are some strategies you can use if, if you don't, but the whole idea is to like, how do you put this stuff in, into your life and be able to like see something? Oh, this log. I wonder if I can lift that. Okay. Let's put it on the scale. No, there's no scale. You look right. at it. You say, maybe I think I can lift yeah. it this way and then you either do or, or you, or you don't. Yeah. So maybe one is nine feet long. Maybe one is six feet long. Maybe one, yeah. there are all these different sizes and shapes. So all of your, the physics, if you're going to like break down the physics of it, it's mm -hmm. extremely complicated. Right, <laughs> right, right. But you can just look at it like, oh, I think I can do yeah. it this way. And to be able to do things that you haven't done before. Mm -hmm. and, and to just like look at it, assess it, and, and figure it out. You're climbing a tree. Yeah. You've never climbed this tree before. Yeah. Well, then how can you possibly do it? You, you just like oh, go up here, there. You just like work it out as you as you go. And you, I think you could it's like anything else you get better as you practice it and get more used to it, get more used to these situations where like, okay, now I'm, I'm 30 feet in the air. Here's this like pretty sketchy transition that I, I have to do. I'm, I got to get down or I really want to get up to the top of this tree. I have another 30 feet to go. Right. It's getting a little sketchy right here, mm -hmm. but I, I know this move. I can do this pull up dip kind of thing. I've done it million times sure so i have confidence in myself that i can do this mm -hmm. transition and it's not any different at 30 feet than it is at eight feet so you just like maybe the handles are a little bit different but you just like still apply these same things like i've never done this yeah. before but i know i can yeah. do it and yeah. keeping that uh that calmness because mm -hmm. we, we both experience it like sometimes you start to get up to yeah. and then like that that fear kicks in a little bit like you look down like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm pretty high up here. Sure. Um, that was a pretty sketchy transition. Maybe you get like something in your eye, maybe some bark gets in your eye. So you, yeah. you have to like, and we get up in these pine trees Yeah. and you get up to the top and it starts like, yeah. swaying in the wind. Yeah. And that's a <laughs> unnerving feeling at first. Yeah. But if you just like, trying to get used to it. Like, this is actually pretty fun. I trust the tree. Right. It's been here for a hundred years. I think yeah. It's, okay. it's a novel experience. Yeah. 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 It should be pretty amazing. And I think we'll all like grow as instructors because part of it is, is that too, like taking our, ourselves and living up to this ideal of the protector pathway. Yeah. Cause we yeah. have to like, part of it, there's, um, like I've talked to a lot of people recently, they talk about uh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. So like, do you ever get that where you're mm. like, I'm not really good enough to, to do this, man. I'm afflicted with that. Yeah. <laughs> I always have been. Um, it's really interesting that you brought that up. I think about it a lot too. And just like, uh, yeah, you, you're just like, you're standing there, there's a group of people and you suddenly realize you're like, there's a circle of people and you're the only one five feet out of the circle. 
<laughs> you can imagine what everyone else is thinking. You know, they think that you're that you're doing it on purpose. Like you're like, I'm, oh, I'm going to stay out of this. Uh, and it kind of breaks up the cohesiveness of the group. So like, I've, I've felt myself doing that a lot. Um, and like, I'm, I'm always working on it. I'm always, I'm always noticing the proximity of other people in the group. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then trying to like get back in closer and like, naturally I'll just, I'll just kind of sit back from things or, um, cause you're not thinking yeah. you're, like, you're good. You don't think you're like good enough to be like in that um, situation. Like what's you know, the, I don't know what it is exactly. I don't think it's like a good enough thing. I think it's more like, um, I'm, I just like to be independent and I like to be able to, uh, come and go as I please. But the problem with that is that, um, when you're there, the experience isn't as valuable when you're not really plugged in. Um, so like part of that is like, you know, you need to have a little bit of imposter syndrome if you're in a group that you, you definitely don't really fit in, you know, you can try and you can be friendly and, uh, have good conversations with people, but like, yeah, you, you might just realize that this is not my group of people mm -hmm. like, and that's okay too. Uh, but what's problematic is where you literally say that all the time. And you're not making any attempts to find that group of people where you don't feel like that. Uh, so it's, I think it's important to try and engage with people um, as much as possible because um, you're there. And like, what else are you going to do? You're there in a group of people uh, and you might not know them, but you should, you should talk to them and see maybe they have something really interesting to say to you that you're never going to forget. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know why that imposter syndrome is there or um or you know what leads to that but i don't know do you feel like that sometimes where you're checking yes out? yeah sometimes like like if i'm like so i'll teach martial arts but i also know a lot of martial arts teachers that are a lot yeah. better than me so it's like uh, am i good enough to really be hmm. so when i was teaching at white pine and matt started like uh talking about advertising I was like, no i, I don't want to ad advertise i don't even want to charge money if people come they can give a donation. It'll all go to white pine. Cool. I want to do it to, to practice, but if like, if they want to pay, I know this other guy that's a lot better than me, but then yeah. people will come to me and maybe I'm a better teacher. Maybe I am a better teacher than that other guy who can beat me up. Yeah. Um, I've had people say that, say that too. Uh, like one of my buddies, uh, he would, he was training with me for a while. Um, and then he was, um, training with this other guy who's he was like really really good Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy Muay Thai he was really Damn. really good he could probably beat me up sure um, but my buddy was like oh yeah. well you're a better teacher than him uh, yeah. so I was like just because somebody is like better in some way doesn't mean they're like the yeah yeah it's it's, it's kind right. of a, a weird thing so yeah. I try to be not like exaggerate or I, I, um, um, I don't want to just like, Oh, I, I suck. You don't want to learn from me. Mm. I don't want to be like, Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm really good. And I'm a better teacher than that other guy who's who can beat me up. Trust right. me. You can, right. So yeah. it's like this weird, weird sort of a, a thing, but yeah, that's kind of like what, what I think of as like the imposter syndrome or like sometimes when, uh, I know my kettlebell technique is good. I know I have a good amount of strength, yeah. but, and there's been guys that are, maybe they can outlift me in some different ways that have came to me for, it's usually kettlebell training. Usually people will find yeah. me like on the strong first side or, and they'll want to learn. They'll say, I want to learn these two techniques. They're not coming to me for a workout. Okay. They want yeah. high level technique instruction on like two things. They want to learn the snatch and the swing or the clean and jerk or something like that. But it's almost always two things to get up in the swing or, uh, they're already strong. They're already fit. They don't need me for a workout. They need me for, so it can be kind of like, Oh, here's this dude that can mm -hmm. squat 500 pounds. I can't squat 500 right. pounds, right. but he's coming to me for lessons. Does he know that I can't squat 500 pounds, <laughs> yeah. but it's not right. like that. And they, 
pretty much all we, I, I've never had anybody really complain like, Oh, I thought you were going to be better than that or something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. this weird thing. So the imposter syndrome can, mm. yeah, uh, I think it, it's probably a healthy thing to have because then you're, you don't get complacent and you're like, I am so good. Right. I right. don't even need to like, read those now. books anymore. Yeah. I mean, you look over there, there's, uh, like 40 books from the library, uh, like on the floor. <laughs> yes, they yes. used to be on this table, but I cleaned the table off. Uh, <laughs> for you to come here. Usually there's like <laughs> there's stacks of like, there's yoga and there's all kinds of strength books and sure. different things, physical yeah. therapy. And so it's like, man, people pay me a good amount of money to, they expect me to know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I think yeah. a little bit of that imposter syndrome is, it's healthy. It's, it's gotta be a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so like maybe like put a cap on that unless you had like more to add for like that particular thing before we move on is so like we were talking about this program that we're doing. Um, people could travel for it, of course, but we wanted to like talk about it because if steal our idea. Yeah, definitely. Steal Take the idea. idea. You, yeah. you can, uh, uh, but, Oh, that's a cool idea. I want to teach rock lifting. Well, go out and lift some stones, get some, right. get some technique stuff down, figure a few things out right. and, uh, yeah, it's get, free. get people out doing, get yeah. people out doing it and just give it a try. If there's not a group in your area, start one. And, uh, I mean, that's, if you're in the area, get a hold of us. If you're not start your, start your own thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just, um, uh, if you can't find anybody yet, then then go out and, and maybe try some things on your own too. You know, I learned a lot of stuff just from going out in the woods and even though no one told me to take it seriously, I was like, well, I notice I'm having this problem when I'm climbing trees. When I get to this scenario, this happens, I'm stumped. Uh, and I'll just like, I've just learned how to take little problems that no one else but me cares about <laughs> seriously enough to solve them. And yeah. that helps so much. I feel like, uh, with your confidence in the woods is just like, um, you know, finding a little challenge. Okay. I can't do it right away. That's fine. What can I get out of this? Like, like trying to pick up a rock that you can't quite get up off the ground. Okay. Why can't I get it off the ground? Just do a little problem solving. Like, mm -hmm. is it cause the grip is so awkward? Maybe I need to feel around the rock and get a better, uh, handle. Or maybe it's like, uh, how are my feet set up on this rock? Am I getting over top of it enough so that it makes sense? Or uh, what if I, I turn the rock like 90 degrees and with the slope I'm standing on, that's going to work a little better. Yeah. Um, and that's how you start to get like real information. And you're not just like reading stuff online or watching videos, which can all be good. But when you actually get out and do it, then you start to feel like you're on the right path to mastery versus just, um, I don't know, going out and, and doing things you know you can do and then never learning or, or having to go through the problem solving stage. Um, I don't know. I mean, you and I, we love the puzzles. We mm -hmm. love the challenges and like, you know, I don't like math, but, me, I, like, yeah, me <laughs> but I like picking up, you know, something that's hard to pick up or figuring out, um, like, like yesterday I was doing a couple, like going up a vine and then I was going down a tree and I wasn't sure that I could actually bridge the gap. And once I got up there, I was still very uncertain and quickly losing confidence. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, it's going to be okay. You have enough strength left to hold onto this vine. What if I turn my head and lean my spine backwards? Oh, I got it. I got the tree with my hand. Okay. Now I'm going to try and transition my legs over. Um, and yeah, just solving those puzzles, man, is, is part of why this is so powerful for you. It's like, I get out there and, um, and it's, it's like what humans have always done. You know, we've gone mm -hmm. into new environments and figured it out. So like, it feels like this is what my ancestors did at some point in time. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah. And speaking of maybe not to like actually get off the subject, mm. like something else I was thinking about is that I, I look over at, uh, I know most people just listen to the show, but the show is on, on YouTube. Um, it's, uh, the path notes YouTube channel now, but, uh, you can see I got this great horned owl tapestry for the, the background of the show. And what I told the story a time or two, like what led to this, me getting this tapestry was this other peak experience in the woods that had nothing to do with lifting a big rock or a, carrying a big log or something like that. It was this, owl owl experience and then i get the owl and you can see like life hasn't always been easy like he's had he's had some stuff go wrong but uh so the owl experience joey and i were in the woods the same woods we were at yesterday it's like what was what's your um story of when we saw that owl Ah, i I wonder how your how different your story may be than mine because that's something else i think is interesting is like we can go through the woods and I'm, right. and I'm thinking maybe you're going to mention something else, but you don't mention that stuff. You're talking yeah. about other stuff. And I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So there, there's so much that happens. There's these different like peak experiences, but yours is a little bit different than mine. Mm-hmm. We, we were there together. We probably right. weren't more than 30, 40, 50 feet apart the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. But so it was like, yeah, we're hit this pretty much the same place together we're talking hanging out right. doing stuff but your experience is not quite like mine right so like what what's your like owl story because you got yeah, like yeah. real up close to oh, the owl too yeah yeah um we probably practically could have kissed that owl we were so close um yeah we were just playing in the woods and we found um a dead tree that was like a big dead tree with uh, you know big branches coming off the ground and we were kind of doing our thing, yes, please, um, jumping around and, and balancing. And we weren't trying to be sneaky or anything. And I was, I just remember being real focused on the next jump I was looking at. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, there's an owl over there. And it even took me a second to like process that it was so close to us. It was just farther down the same log this owl was sitting there looking directly at us, a huge owl here. Um, and you just never see them that low and, um, and not flying away. So we, <laughs> you're like, let's get closer. And I, you know, that's, I just assumed it would fly away right away. I was like, as soon as we address this thing and it realizes we know it's there, it's going to leave. Uh, but no, you got a little closer and you're, you're kind of sneaking through the woods. I was kind of hanging back cause I want to see what would happen. And I want to try to get some cool shots. So you get close to this owl, uh, and, and you just kept getting closer and closer to the owl. And when you're like still 15 feet away or more, I was like, you know, that's probably where I would stop personally. <laughs> cause like, you know, owls, not like a super dangerous creature, but like, I probably just would have like been like, this is pretty crazy. I'm going to stop the experience here. It doesn't need to get any better because it's already so good. Uh, you were like, <laughs> I'm going to see how close I can get. So you like, you're 10 feet away. And then you you climb up onto the tree again so that you can be face to face. And as soon as you start to go for the climb, I think there's 0% chance he's going to get on this log without the owl leaving. Uh, but no, you got on. You're like straddling the log and you're looking this owl right in the eyes. You're super, super close. The owl's looking at you right back. And, uh, and I was still, you know, solid 20 feet away or so. I took a few pictures of you. I'm just like, man, I know he's having some kind of transcendent experience down there because <laughs> he's not moving at all. You're just sitting there staring at it. Um, and I could tell you, you know, I, I shouldn't interrupt. Like I was just, I'm just gonna let him have this moment uh, and take a few pictures. And um, yeah, man, I just kept expecting it to fly away. And then you got off it, and you were like, "You should come up here and do this." And I was like, "Oh my god, all right." So uh, I did the same thing, and it doesn't move. Um, and now I'm staring directly into the eyes of an owl. I'm looking at its talons, 
Those were crazy. <laughs> They're like uh, Velociraptor talons. They look like ridiculous weapons. And they just keep getting uh, bigger and bigger yeah. and sharper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. It's just like uh, you're looking in this thing's face and it's uh, this insane clarity. That's what I felt like. It was like it clearly knows what is reality right now. Like it's not like a squirrel where – um, you know, they're, what they do is cool, but you can tell they're not very smart. Uh, but, <laughs> but like an owl, it was totally different. It was like, it knew exactly what was going on and it was holding its ground. That was the impression I got was like, I'm not intimidated by you. I have options. Um, but like you were getting, you went back after I sat with the owl and we're getting even <laughs> closer and you were like should i touch it <laughs> and i was like no <laughs> don't do it man because i just kept thinking about those talons and how big of a hole it was gonna rip in your arm um or your face <laughs> and i was worried yeah. about you a little bit because you were like you know you you really want to connect with this thing uh, but i just kept thinking about every like park ranger spiel i'd ever heard about not touching wild animals and <laughs> how wrong that can go um so yeah. it's just fascinating yeah they will attack people <laughs> they will <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. glad you didn't touch that thing man yeah i was like i kind of like i kept just like thanking the owl for letting me get closer yeah and then but when i was like kind of asking if it was okay to touch I was I was pretty much getting a solid no on that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, he kind of like, hissed. I, I, I wanted to, and like I'd get my hand a little bit closer, it start to open its mouth. And like, oh yeah, but yeah, it was crazy, and like I got this, like the message that I was getting was, "Who are you?" Mm. And mm. then yeah, you know, it was like this whole thing that I was like working out, it was like this crazy experience. Yeah, um, and that was like the message that I got was, "Who are you?" And that's you know kind of like what the show is about. Like, who are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? And um, so, like, did you get like any kind of like message from Al, or like what was um, like? Did you have any kind of like? Yeah, I know, yeah, it was a, this yeah. awesome experience to get that that close yeah. to like the apex predator of the. <laughs> that's pretty much what they are. <laughs> yeah, they'll dude. fuck eagles up sometimes. <laughs> they don't win like every fight with the eagles. Yeah, but, but they pretty, win some of them. Cool. Yeah. It's crazy because obviously an eagle, you know, six and a half foot wingspan, something like that. And I was new, nowhere near that big. So that's yeah. insane. And double, like, way heavier. And, yeah. 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 You know, I, um, I just kept thinking like, you know, like the woods produce this, like, um, and it's kind of a reminder of how ferocious, you know, for me, it was like how, how pointed, like this bird is a killer. And when you look in its eyes, I saw the eyes of a killer, um, but a beautiful killer, mm -hmm. like graceful um, and so, yeah, intelligent, like we keep saying. Mm -hmm. um, and to see like the beauty of it mixed with the ferocity of it um, and, and just like having the woods, you know, all around us to look at at the same time. I just kept looking at the bird and looking at the woods and I'm like, how did this thing get shaped by this, you mm -hmm. know? Um, it's so powerful. It's really powerful mm -hmm. and it's intimidating me. And here I am like, you know, I'm way heavier than it. I'm way stronger than it. Um, and theoretically I'm smarter than it, but it's still having this insane effect on me. Um, and you just can't ignore it. it just kind of, I don't know. It just kind of, it focused me in. It made me feel like I was an owl a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> like be more like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was really something. And that was, that's what led me to, like, I found this tapestry that looked almost the same, the same head position. Yeah. Like that's these, these eyes that are just like exactly what it looked like. looking, looking right at you. And, uh, it kind of felt like just about as big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah. didn't feel like real far off from like what was really going on. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was like, – and what is that owl's place? Like, do the other animals um, – They, of course, uh, I would imagine all the, all the animals in this area know mm -hmm. this owl. Got to. Got to. Like, every deer, every yeah. 
certainly every squirrel knows this dude. Yeah. And they like they talk like, oh, was, gotta watch out, homeboys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just like a uh, hundred feet that way. So uh, <clears throat> you better like watch out. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, really amazing thing. <clears throat> so the like the, the point of like um, kind of getting into that is even if you're like mm. if you're not. Like, oh, I climbed 60 feet up in this tree. It was just yeah. this amazing thing. Or right. I lifted this rock and carried it. It had to have been 200 pounds. Yeah. Anybody pretty much can have these peak experiences mm. in, in the in the woods. Maybe yeah. it's just like seeing a deer. I've seen, I don't know how many deer I've seen, thousands of deer. To me, it's still like mm. super cool. Yes, just like same. see a deer or to see a woodpecker. I've seen thousands of woodpeckers. They're my favorite bird, but to see one, it's like, oh, phew. it's just like this. Yeah, it's it's really cool every yeah. time. It's not like, oh, there's another woodpecker. Right. Oh, it's deer. Right. It's always like, wow, look at deer. Yeah. I've seen a million yeah. of them, but wow, wow, it's still cool every time. So, um, I guess like to kind of like uh, segue, maybe an awkward segue, but like what was the other thing that you were uh, like, where you want to talk about like the, the book you're writing or like um, the... uh, just more like, uh, you know, maybe some, some practices that, uh, that we do, like, like we're just, I've kind of talked about like the real, like real nitty gritty, like physical practices. Uh, but now, you know, here we're talking about these, these different animals and how uh, we're on the lookout for them and how a huge part of you know, our philosophy on this kind of thing that makes it different from fitness is uh, we're thinking about our senses a lot more and how to engage with what's around us with our senses. So like uh, I have a conscious practice dedicated to my hearing uh, and to my eyes. Uh, so this is something I work on. Like I, I like sit down and I have a protocol that I follow to help those things not only stay sharp, but maybe improve. Um, and that's something that like, you know, you're not going to get in a gym. Um, you're not going to get anywhere. There's no place you can go besides maybe like a yoga class where they might have you tune in to something like that. Mm. Um, so like one thing I've been doing is um, I found an excellent source of information about eyesight, like these people called Envision Self Healing. It's just two guys, I think they're from the UK, and they make all these videos on different eye exercises. Um, so a lot of people think that you can't make your vision any better than it is, but uh, at the same time, you have a whole field of medicine called vision therapy that does that exact thing, where you know even athletes who don't have any eyesight issues will go there to improve their ability to integrate their eyes and their brain. Uh, so like what we're doing when we're looking for um, like a pileated woodpecker is we're, we're calibrating our hardware and our software and trying to um, tune out some things and tune into other things. And that's a big part of, of, our mindset it, when we're in the woods is like um, we're using our brain and our eyes to their fullest potential by doing this. Um, so like every day I've been doing about four or five different eye exercises because uh, I, I want my eyes to be sharper. And when we were in the woods yesterday, I did them about an hour before mm. and it, it definitely makes a difference. Like for example, um, like you have convergence and divergence. So, um, when people are trying to see things closer, like this microphone, as I look at the microphone, my eyeballs get closer together. And mm. then now I look up and past you, I can see your fridge back there. Now my eyes have had to diverge a little bit and get a little farther apart. Mm. Uh, so one thing I might do is I'll look at the microphone, I look at you and then I look beyond you and then back at you and back at the microphone. And now I'm just taking my eyes back and forth um, and getting them tuned in. I'm turning my eyes into like this conscious development practice. Um, so yeah, that's like a, like overlooked. I feel like you just think uh, my senses are my senses. That's all I got. That's all I'm going to get. Uh, it's all going to get worse over time. It's like real <laughs> negative, but I like the possibilities that are opened up 
by engaging with them. So have you done that kind of work? Yeah, there was a book written by Mantok Chia. Um, I think it's called like the art of cosmic vision or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the idea being, um, he was credited a lot of his information to, I forget her name, but the idea is, is basically your eyes, you know, have these lenses and the muscles around them squeeze yeah. in different ways. So you're focusing yeah. on something far away. Sure. The muscles around the eyes are doing something different. Yeah. And so you can get better by, tuning those muscles sure. um, by, you know, con- contracting the right amount at the right time for what you're focusing on. So you, that sure. is a, a skill you can improve on mm-hmm. instead of just thinking of it as like this, you know, solid lens that just gets war over time. Right. It, right. It can actually improve. And yeah, like yeah. some of the um, exercises that it had were, uh, so you uh, you look at a a sign or mm. a picture on the wall or something like that, and you color it in without skipping with your eyes, oh, left, right, left, yeah. right, and you just like color it in with your eyes. Hmm. And a lot of times, well, at first you'll have the, the tendency to want to like skip over a spot, yeah, You're just like little by little, yeah. left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, and you you color in this Got it. Yeah. painting. And then kind of like what you were talking about before, you look at something far, something close. Something, yeah. And yeah. To, like, what's the farthest thing you can see? Okay, what's the closest thing you can see? Right, um, right. These, all these different things, and it seems to have helped. And cool. uh, like Some of that book, it did get into, like I said, like some, some of these people, they, they were doing it enough that they could even see stars in the daytime. Mm. Huh. I was like, yeah. okay, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean... You can see the sun. Well, That's yeah, not crazy. Yeah, you can see the sun. Uh, I could see maybe at certain times you could see yeah. a few extra stars. But if they're talking yeah. like noon, full sun, I would say extremely unlikely. Yeah. But, you know, I, yeah. I hear you. Like that, uh, there's actual, I um, totally forget what ancient peoples did this. But um, in their society, you know, hunting was big. And there's actually a cluster of stars that they would use as a metric where like it's a certain constellation. If you could see like three out of the stars, man, you're probably not going to be a great hunter. Mm. You can see five out of the stars. They're like, all right, you're pretty great. Anything beyond that. It's like, wow, you're a stellar hunter. Like, um, I always found that interesting. I forget what constellation it is, although I can recognize it out in the sky. Um, but yeah, it, it applies to your life. You know, you need to, uh, focus your eyes in different ways and like we're always staring at cell phones and and laptops and or we're mm-hmm. inside where the distance is never that far mm-hmm. um, so like it's uh, the percentage of people who wear glasses because they're nearsighted and they have myopia is what they call it then it it goes up more and more uh, based off of how much education you have there's a direct correlation. Uh, if you have a, a higher degree, like a master's or a PhD, like I forget what the numbers exactly are, but uh, it's beyond 50% by the time you get to PhD. I think it's like a 65% chance that you'll have my, uh, myopia. Because you've done so much reading. And- yeah. So it used to be just like the more highly educated people who are getting this myopia. But now because everyone's staring at their phones and stuff all the time, um, you know, a lot of people, including myself, think that the incidence of this is just going to get worse. Uh, and here we are just pretending like the only thing we can do is um, to have glasses and contacts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I say clearly, if, if your lifestyle choices can make it get worse, then why couldn't your lifestyle changes make it better? The eye is just metabolic tissue that's adapting to uh, the stimuli in your life. Uh, so like one super basic example of how to make your eyesight better is to just, you know, seek out the farthest points sometimes. So like when you're going down the road, yeah, you need to pay attention to the car in front of you, but also it's a great chance to see really far because mm-hmm. it's clear for a long time. Uh, so people who are more myopic, they tend to just look at closer things because they can see it better. 
when you need to train yourself to, to do the opposite. You need to also seek out the farthest points and that starts to retrain you. Yeah, that's really cool. The, um, the Man Talk Chia book I was reading, it, it said that like one thing that he started like learning from this, this woman how to do this, I don't know if it was from her books or in person, I think it was from her books. But he was saying like one thing that he regretted was once he started on it, he committed to it, he threw his glasses away. Oh, that's bold. And then he, but then he <laughs> said that he regretted that. What, yeah, what, what's yeah. better to do <laughs> is uh, take your glasses off, work on the exercises, yeah. and then go back and get uh, a less strong, a weaker prescription. Yes. So then you have like these other glasses hmm. for however long you're taking them off, you're doing their exercises, you go back yeah. to the eye doctor, you get... Right even less of a prescription right? A weaker prescription, and then right. have a, a progression for it. But he, I think I just, I was just watching a London reel with man talk Chia on it and he, okay. he was not wearing glasses. I don't think he was, wearing, yeah. I don't know if he was wearing contacts or not, Yeah. but right. I do know from reading his book, he said he just threw his glasses away. He was committed to this mm. eyesight thing. And yeah, I've so also made that mistake. Uh, I remember one time back when I was in high school, I've been, cause I've been working on this forever. Uh, I tried to do that. I was like, I'm just literally not going to wear my glasses until I can see again. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of being like, um, you know, um, I'm just going to lift super heavy maximum every day. Mm -hmm. It's like the equivalently ignorant to try and do that. It's like not a good approach, but um, what that guy recommends with the, the weaker prescriptions and stuff is echoed through all the best opinions that I've found mm -hmm. uh, on how to make your eyesight better. And like, um, I do that right now. Like technically my prescriptions negative two and my left eye and negative 2.5, uh, that's a diopter. So when I buy my contacts, uh, that's the, that's one of the main numbers that's important. Um, so what I'm wearing right now is negative two in the left eye and negative 2.25 in the right. So basically it's um, a quarter of a diopter too weak for my right eye. And the idea is I wanted to get my eyes a little closer to imbalance. Um, and in order to do that, um, I want to be safe. And I want to do move it the smallest increment possible. So um, they only sell contacts in certain increments. So that was the next closest one. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I just order it from the UK. Cause you can just type in the numbers for your prescription. I don't have to prove that a doctor told me I should be wearing negative 2.25. Uh, so that's what I do. And I've been doing it, uh, for a solid year now. Um, and I can see great. Um, I've never had any issues with it. Uh, cause I play it, you know, I play everything safe, mm -hmm. you know, like, like for example, when I first did that, I kept 2.5 contacts in my car. So that way, if I ever felt unsafe at all, then I could simply take out the 2.25 and switch out for the stronger one. And, and hey, now, now I'm good. Like, you don't have to be extreme, throw your glasses in the garbage can or, mm -hmm. um, or what have you. So are, are you planning on, so one's two, one's 2.25? Are, yeah. are you thinking next time you're just going to get a set of twos? Or what well, do you think? Like, what, do you, what were you? <laughs> I tried that. I already, I already tried to make that shift. Um, I did the negative 2.25 for three months. And then I was like, okay, three months is a decent amount of time for, for stimulus. Um, you know, if I was weight training for three months I, I, and I was comfortable with that, I would move it up. Uh, so I thought, hey, I'll, I'll see if it works. Uh, so I went to negative two in both eyes and I just couldn't, I was still able to get by safely and, and do things like driving, but I felt more nervous about it. I felt like I was pushing my eyes too hard and they started to mm. feel a little strained. Even though I was trying to relax them, I had to back down then. So, uh, so I went back up to 2.25 and I'm just going to stay there until I really need to change it up. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a good plan. Just like you don't yeah. have to like yeah. do things when you're, you know, ready, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like buy a weight vest and then wear it everywhere I go. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of the equivalent of what it is when you're like, you need your eyes 24 seven. I can't afford to be like burning them out. And then I have like six more hours in the day. And like, I don't feel like looking at anything mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like, you don't want to be there. That's, that's uncomfortable. But, um, 
done. I'm going to use your restroom real quick. Okay, let me hit pause. Cool. <laughs> All right, we're back on. Cool. The, the pee has been peed. <laughs> Much needed. <laughs> uh, so we were just talking about the vision stuff, and then yeah. you have other sense senses that you you work on also yes yes um like one of them is hearing and and just playing with sound uh so like you know you have like attentive listening where maybe you try and hear more out of one side than the other um or just developing more awareness in your ears like like i'll practice um ear wiggling because um i saw a research study where they said that infants um, when they test their hearing it's one of the things they'll look for is a little bit of wiggle in the ears when they hear the sound because otherwise how are you going to communicate with the baby like you can't be like did you hear this beep because they can't talk right so you watch their ears and if they move that's one test that they do for whether or not they heard it so i figure like okay i'm going to take that in the opposite logic learning to wiggle your ears helps your hearing. <laughs> I don't know if this is true. I don't know if there's any kind of, you know, scientific evidence to support that, but I couldn't wiggle my ears when I first tried and I worked on it and I worked on it and now I can wiggle the ears and I can separate the ears. And I can just do one side. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It took me a while, but now I can do it. Yeah. My, it's interesting. My, my dad could wiggle his ears and uh kind of like what we were just like starting to get into before we hit uh record again was my dad was an awesome singer mm. he could play guitar well mm. was an awesome singer you've had like how many singing lessons have you, you take uh let's uh, see man i've probably had at least a dozen uh because one of my clients was a voice coach and, mm. um, so she offered to give me some lessons and uh so i agreed and um, yeah, man, it, it definitely changes the way you talk and the way you sing forever, just to get a few basic principles in your head while you're doing it. Um, like, uh, like you don't sing and talk the same way. Mm -hmm. You try and enunciate the vowels more when you sing. Um, so when you like think about the words you're about to sing, like you break down the word into like, what's the main vowels in that word? And how do I make that stand out? Um, yeah, it's just um, really important to like have a couple of those ideas in your head while you're singing. Like, uh, like knowing not to tense your throat up too much when you try and go high, that's, mm. that's important. Or when you go really low, that's even more relaxed in your voice. Um, so you don't want to create this artificial sound, but instead, uh, you want to remove enough tension, have enough air, pronounce the vowels, and there's just a lot going on. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I have. There was. Um, uh, I've talked to a couple different singing teachers. Mm. There was one that was over just not too far from here, mm. and then there was one. She lives just like a, a block that way. So I called her the other day um, and I think I'm going to get one next weekend, awesome. next Saturday, That's so cool. I think is the plan. Yeah. So I thought I might try a couple teachers and see which yeah. one was, you know, like which like resonated with me or whatever. Like, sure. Because um, I have like people probably heard on, on the show, like I'll, I'll sing with no... Uh, music going on and then I did a couple shows that were uh, me singing and playing guitar and one of them like so I like that like um, where somebody's got kind of like playing guitar and they're telling stories and they're and then uh, so I did one kind of like how I started play guitar and then I was like singing some stuff it was called heartbeat um, it was I don't remember how long ago it was, but if people want to listen to it, but I don't like think of myself as like some great singer. And then I did a show, I think it was just like three shows ago, um, just called like acoustic guitar and me. Mm. And you said, you just, you just heard it. Yeah. And I, so I'm, when I'm doing, I did like, did like this long 
Robert Hunter tribute. Grateful Dead is one of my favorite bands. Robert Hunter was one of their main writers. And he died a few weeks ago, and I did a tribute show to him. And I realized I had my microphone up too loud. So even though I don't think I'm that great of a singer, this is even worse because I had the microphone up too loud. And uh, so it's like, I wonder like what people hear when I'm singing. Like my dad was a really good singer. He sounded kind of like Elvis without trying to sound like Elvis. And it's like, it's like putting my stuff out there. And it was like this thing like, okay, who is a better singer, Whitney Houston or Neil Young? Right. Okay. I would yeah. say Whitney Houston right. is a lot better a singer lot than better Neil singer. Young. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to listen to Whitney Houston. I want to mm. listen to Neil Young. Yeah. Nothing against yeah. Whitney Houston. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah, but the there's not, I mean, not that there might be some songs in here that I, I can listen to, but I'm not gonna be able to hang in there for, to listen yeah. to a whole album of Whitney Houston. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to hang in there, but put some Neil Young on. I don't care if he's, mm. uh, it's, it's like, it's like part of the charm is like, that's him. Like, why couldn't yeah. he find a better singer? Why wouldn't he play just play right. guitar? Well, he's right. not that great of a guitar player either. Right. Yeah. So here you have this guy, he's not a good guitar player and he's not a good singer. Mm. Damn. He's awesome. Damn. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can write a song. Yeah. He, he's, uh, yeah. so I guess like when you, I can take like constructive mm. criticism and, and stuff too, but it's yeah. so like when you said you just heard my sh yeah. show where I was playing, like what, what like what yeah. Like yeah. goes through your, yeah. were you just listening on your phone too? Um, yes, I was just listening okay. on my phone. So disclaimer on that. Cause like it'd be much better with like a car speaker. I listened to it in my car and it sounds a lot different in my car okay. than it does on the phone. I'll, I'll but still, uh, um, but, but yeah, still man, it's not like, it's interesting to hear that like the style that you went for. Um, and it made a lot of sense with just like, the way you approach a lot of other things is like it came across as like this like more old school kind of sound where it's like definitely a little Johnny Cash style and, and some of those like more um uh, what's the word like like not country but a little bit essence of country and then you have like this kind of deep knowing I've lived I've, I've lived things I've been through things kind of edge to your voice which is cool man um there's depth to it that's what i'm trying to say hmm. um it was, it was really interesting to hear you and i could i could tell that you're experimenting with different ways to make the noises um and i think that uh some of the almost like questions i can hear you asking with your voice uh going to a couple of voice lessons is going to like clarify that for you hmm. of like here's when like one thing i heard uh, to be constructive about it is like the amount of air that you're putting into the notes. So you're hitting the notes. Uh, sometimes you're using the right amount of air and sometimes you weren't using the right amount of air. And that comes across because it starts to get kind of like, um, gosh, what's the word? It's not like horsey, but it's like, uh, like there's extra wind in the room. You know, there's sometimes I can hear that where the, the amount of air isn't matched with the intensity of the note you're producing. Interesting. Yeah. So why you think I'm, I'm uh, running out and I'm trying to like finish the word um, or is it like, you're like... doing too much air. Yeah. And this is just like from a second of hearing and I don't, I'm not a voice coach. Don't know. But I, the only reason I recognize is because I do that. You're, okay. And my voice coach pointed that out to me when I was taking lessons was like, look, man, this is what's happening um like finding this match uh it, it takes a little like time to hone it in and like you weren't doing it all the time by any means uh but like that's one thing that i bet you uh whoever you choose will mm -hmm. bring up is like yo this is where it's a little too breathy is what they like to say huh um, interesting yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and uh so the uh like some of my favorite singers have that like kind of like a raspy, yeah. raspy sort of, it's kind of thing, nice thing going on. But I also like, I really want to get better. And part of like why I'm like just throwing it out there. Like I'll, I'll yeah. sing like yeah. uh, these different things with no music to like try to like tune my, That's the myself. Thing. It's just like people can say whatever they want. I, yeah. I mean, I hope people like it or at least like yeah. kind of entertained by it or, yeah. oh, I mean, it's, I'm not like, 
prepare yourselves for the great greatness. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to, I'm, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to blow your mind here with my capabilities, <laughs> but it's just like, everybody sings pretty much like, yeah. And then you have the Whitney Houston's, you have the Neil Young's mm. and so, and part of, I think is just like getting over the, I'm putting this, this, uh, my stuff out. This is me. This is what I sound like. There was no editing. There was no take two. There was no, yeah. it, it was, it's 20 minutes long. It took 20 minutes to do it. And nice. uh, if you, if you heard it, I, I started playing one song and I kind of like forgot where I was. I was like, Oh yeah. fuck. I was like, I'll come back to that one. <laughs> and I just started playing the, the next one and came back to it. Sure. It's like, that's, there's no auto tune. There's no right. like, crazy effects. It goes right from the my microphone to the computer. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, just sure. this is just what it is. And I'm not mm. uh, expecting a big record deal or anything. Um, mm. But yeah, like, so the ones that I picked, so like I like uh, the sound of like a lot of um, like the old like black gospel. Mm. Yes. And I was watching, I was watching something and even like Elvis Presley gospel, which was yeah. kind of like Southern of course he was white, but it's kind of like black gospel stuff. Sure. And I like a lot of that sound. And I remember watching some video documentary thing mm. where somebody's going to this uh, black gospel choir mm. and she was coming from um, uh, a classical um, background of sure. You're reading the notes, okay. So you have yeah. you have the sheet music, and you're yeah. singing along, and 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 you're reading the notes. And the black gospel mm -hmm. choir, they're they're not doing that. Yeah. And their their yeah. their thing was like you stay you stay close to the fire, and you're yeah. bound to get warm. Yeah. So come here, you sing with us. Right. You'll start to get it. You don't have to read yeah. the notes. Right. You'll and they, they they and it's a different sort of thing. And so like one of the teachers that I picked, uh, she's a a, a black woman. I'm, I'm not sure how old she is. I don't want to even guess. Um, probably something like 40 something, 50, yeah. maybe. I don't know exactly. I haven't actually met her in person. She lives right. And the other one was this, uh, I don't know how old she is, probably in her thirties, white woman went to Berkeley. Got it. Uh, yeah. I think she sings like more of a country style where this, they, they both say they teach like everything. So sure. like cla both classically trained. Yeah. And, uh, like one of my like favorite singers and guitar players, and I think it's really rare, is Johnny Lang. Mm. And I think he's one of the few, mm. or like one of the best. Yeah, He's the best example I can think of yeah. who can both play guitar at 100% effort, yeah. sing at 100% effort, Amazing. and he's just belting it out and just yeah. squeezing every Shh. bit of emotion into his playing. Yeah. And it, and it comes out in the guitar, you know, he's guitar master, singing master has been since he was a kid. And there's like plenty of people that can sing and play guitar at the same time, sure. but most of them aren't like belting it out and just playing the hell out of guitar like him. So yeah. it's a matter of like finding my, but I'm not going to go to this, these teachers say, I want to sound like Johnny Lang. Right. It's like, what can I, I'm not trying <laughs> to do like my Johnny Lang impersonation. No. Those songs I wrote, those song, most of those songs I wrote, or some of them are, I wrote when I was like maybe shortly after high school, like they're like 20 years old, like some, a couple of those songs, one of them, cool, which it's kind of like a weird thing to play in a way I wrote for a, a girlfriend of mine mm -hmm. and it was like that, that lullaby mm -hmm. thing that I did. Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of like weird to play that and I'm putting it out. I know she, even though she's married uh, someone else now, I know she listens to the show sometimes. We're still, we don't talk very often, but sometimes something might come up. Where my she still talks to my daughter. Yeah. So there's um like guys, it's cool. Like say that out loud, make that public. I don't know. It's it's true, but it's, um so it's kind of like weird to play that because it's like a song that I wrote for her. I'm not with her anymore. Yeah. But. Yeah. And like, do you have stuff that you've like mm. written? Have you written your own stuff? Or? You know, I've written out lyrics before, um, and I have a real hard time. Like, I come up with something that I like, 
And then the next time I try and play it because I haven't like, you know, transcribed it into like notes that I've written out or anything. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time recreating it. Um, so one thing I've tried recently is uh, I found an app that tells you what note, uh, whatever noise the phone is hearing. Oh, that's and it's cool. super useful because yeah. um, like I come with the melody usually with my voice, like here's the lyrics and I'll run through and I'll figure out a melody I like. And then I pull out the app and it tells me what notes. So then I'll write down the chords when they need to be struck in relation to the words. So, you know, here's the lyrics written. I'll write like a D um, over the word walking, hmm. you know? Um, so that's one tool I've been trying to help. But no, man, I, I mainly just, um, I do like a lot of improvisational singing uh, where like a lot of the times it doesn't even have words and I'm singing over other songs because uh, I love the challenge of like harmonizing with the song, right? Like if it's, a, if it's in the minor key, it's going to sound a lot different. Um, I have to use my voice in that way versus a major key. Um, and yeah, I won't even use words. I'll just like make noises mm. that match with those noises and I'll get creative. So um, you know, the chorus of the song is hitting certain notes. I'm hitting other notes, but we're both in harmony. Uh, I do a lot of this kind of singing. And then sometimes I'll practice really basic songs like the Star Spangled Banner, mm -hmm. uh, where it's not an easy song to sing. Mm -hmm. um, but I've heard it so many times that even though I'm not very good at remembering lyrics, I actually do know the words mm -hmm. of that song. <laughs> um, and so I've, I even have recorded and, and posted like publicly, which is like the only thing I've ever done. So self Yeah, I saw that. It. Yeah, on the 4th of July, right? Yeah, man, yeah. like right around there. And like, that was hard for me to do. I almost didn't post it. I thought Isn't about- Isn't that it. crazy? Yeah. Yeah, like, what are, it's what, crazy. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? <laughs> Nothing. You suck. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. But, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Just like challenging your challenging yourself and being brave about being a noob at something. Mm -hmm. Like, like I I don't know about singing, but I'm gonna try, and I'm gonna make the mistakes. And even if eighty percent of it is shit, maybe twenty percent will be good, and that's a starting point. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I think part of it, that's like again, that's like why I was like just starting to do the stuff on the air because I, I was reading a lot of lyrics. <clears throat> Yeah. I have like the Robert Hunter book. I have the Grateful Dead book. I'm just like reading mm -hmm. lyrics, read some Rumi, read some Khalil Gibran, read some Robert mm -hmm. Hunter. And, I'm, yeah. and then I was like, I'm going to start playing and singing. And, and cool. probably just like putting it out there. Cause yeah. you can look up, okay. Led Zeppelin. You could say like, the, well, maybe the greatest rock and roll band ever. Yeah. Arguably. Yeah. Now look on YouTube, watch, mm -hmm. watch a performance how many thumbs downs do they get? Mm. A, lot. a lot. What yeah. else do you want yeah. besides the greatest rock and roll band <laughs> yeah. playing their stuff? Right. But there's still yeah. some people that are thumbs yeah. down. Thumbs down. Show so. them. Or like the Joe Rogan podcast, yeah. which like okay, you can, people can say what they, they want, but almost immediately he'll put the – he gets – a ton of listeners as soon as he puts them out, he could yeah. get published at different times, but still sure. like and there's enough people like checking in on it. And then it'd be like within hour, an hour, there's like a thousand people thumbs down, thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Right? <laughs> I'd love to see the like percentage of total minutes of that episode. They listened to before they hit the thumbs down too. Yeah. Um, you know, versus like the real fans are probably like, gonna listen to the whole thing and then decide mm -hmm. how they really feel about the whole thing yeah i don't know if i've ever thumbs down a video i have a few times <laughs> so i'm real angry you know <laughs> yeah i get to a strong move like click a button <laughs> with a picture of a hand i make a statement <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's strange but yeah like the the fear of like singing in, in public public speaking yeah. It's like, what are people going to do so I can put my stuff out? Neil Young, mm. if he was like waiting to sound like Whitney Houston, we'd yeah. never have Neil Young. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, it's about finding your voice, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, what, what really works for you and how are you going to figure that out unless you try a lot of stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, like you probably have an idealized version of what your voice will sound like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my advice is um, detach yourself from that idealized version. Mm-hmm. and just try and, and figure out what does my voice, um, how does it, when does it operate best? And, um, and then where does it operate the worst and work a little bit on the worst, but, mm-hmm. but also stay, find the strong zone as well. Um, like one thing that I would guess because you talk with a deep voice, uh, is that you like hitting the high notes for you is going to be a weird feeling. Yeah. Um, Like when she, like, you're going to do vocal exercises for sure with either of these teachers and she's going to take you up that piano. And when you get up to these high notes, my guess is you're starting to get a little nervous or anxious. Uh, So my advice is know that's coming and start working on that immediately. I'm going to be cool with high pitches coming out of this mouth. (laughs) It's permitted. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're right. I don't uh, try to hit like, uh, any kind of high note yeah. at all. Yeah. My uh, dad could, mm. they could sing like real low. He could sing and would get a up high and just like had this, like, this, this range of stuff. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see like what comes out. Cause I've been like singing and playing guitar since I was, I started playing guitar when I was 13. Yeah. And so like more recently I've started to like try to like dig in more try to play pretty much every day, try to yeah. like get, get better. And I don't know that I'd want, I thought about doing like some like live from my apartment concerts, like on, on YouTube or stuff. Cause audiences can really ruin it for me. I don't like noise when I'm playing. I don't like yeah. a, a fan to be on. I don't like, I so if uh, I'm playing and people are talking, I'm like, it would drive me bonkers. But like, um, when we were like there was that white pine event the other day where yeah. we were competing and stuff. And like it said on the thing that they were going to have live music. And so I asked him, I was like, Oh cool. You have bands playing. Yeah. It was uh, actually, you know, it was before he figured out who was going to play there. He's like, actually yeah. I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. And he said something like, uh, he's like, yeah, you can, bring your guitar and stuff. I'm like, nah, yeah, it's like, I, I can, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I could, right. But it's like, I'm, I'm almost, I feel like I'm almost like preparing for something. Mm. And if I did play somewhere, it would probably be something like white pine yeah. where I know the audience is going to be cool. Whoever shows right. everybody that goes there is awesome. Yeah. And it's not like I'm going somewhere expecting some, something I don't know. So, like, do you yeah, think about yeah. playing? Because you you play guitar too. So, do you think yeah, about yeah. like playing for people, or why are you why are yeah. you going through the singing lessons? You say mm. you sing at least like a half hour a day. Why? Yeah. Why? Uh, because uh, it's there, and I want to I want to own it. I want to own my voice better. Um, and I really like I've always admired people who can use their voice well, like like publicly speaking. And that person who like, you know, as soon as everyone starts singing happy birthday, they're like all into it and they, they don't mind being little standout, you know, uh, and they're comfortable with that. And I always feel like closed off about it and I'm not okay with living the rest of my life being closed off about it. Mm -hmm. So I started to work on it and, um, and I do fantasize ever since I was young, you know, about, doing like a public like performances. Uh, and when I was in high school, I played in a band and I remember uh, we did um, uh, like battle of the bands. You were playing guitar? Yeah, I was playing the rhythm guitar. Um, and so we played like, you know, all these local shows, like just at bars and stuff. Um, you know, we couldn't drink or anything, but we were just there. And, and that was always pretty small audiences, maybe like 20 at most, maybe 30. Um, but then we did this battle of the bands. It was one of the last like shows I ever played. Uh, and you know, there's like, it was down at the riverfront in Madison, Indiana. And uh, there's, you know, at least probably a hundred people either in the crowd right there. And then there's all these people walking around. So mm-hmm. probably more. And it was like, damn, like this is, this is what it feels like to be on a stage and to perform. 
And it's amazing how you can try and like visualize what that's going to be like. Um, and you can have doubts about it. But once you get up there, you're like, I want to entertain these people more than I am nervous. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that was, I remember just feeling like, like I'm hitting all these chords and like, I'm even doing a little bit of like extra improv here and I can actually hear myself too. Mm -hmm. I know they're hearing my individual guitar ring out. Um, and that was cool for me because, you know, uh, I don't know if I ever would have done that otherwise, unless I'd been in that band, but like, yeah, all the time, man, I think about going to an open mic or something and mm -hmm. singing something for real. Uh, but it's kind of like that imposter syndrome you're talking about. Like, um, I'm having a hard time just committing and being like, okay, I wrote this song. Now I'm going to, I'm going to work on it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's going to be some tedious parts. I'm going to work on it until I have something that's ready for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to make that ready point like perfection because otherwise mm -hmm. it's just a reason why I never have to rise to the occasion and perform. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important to have realistic standards and maybe even set a deadline. Like, I don't know, man, if you want to, if you want to go to an open mic, maybe we could set, we could find a place, find a deadline and then like, okay, now we have three months to go do a song. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a lot easier if you were there too. <laughs> yeah. Like, but yeah, get up and like, yeah, cause it's, it's open mic. It might be a cool one because I think most people are there to like really listen. So you're not just playing at some bar where yeah. people are just going to like drink and there happens to be some guy yeah, playing right. a guitar because that can really run at you. Like mm -hmm. I, I've been to, you know, these places where I'm going to like listen to somebody play mm -hmm. and then there's some like loud group over there, yeah. like not paying any attention to the music. They're, right. they're loud about whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Man, what's, <laughs> it's, it can be like so frustrating, but yeah, right. that's a, that's a definite possibility. Cause I have like, there's some stuff that I can do and um, like I was what what probably made me like better and in another way slowed me down was when I started getting into classical mm. playing and I'm yeah. like learning these like classical Spanish classical a little bit of flamenco kinds of stuff it's tough. It, was, it was hard uh, of course it made me better at finger picking it made me better at and I like a lot of that stuff but then I'm not really learning the Neil Young songs. I'm not learning the, these other songs. And um, cause to me, it, it got kind of like boring to play. Like I'd learn a song and then it's like, I didn't really want to play it anymore. But then, yeah. but once I got into like the classical stuff, it was like, I could just, it was always like fun to play. Yeah. And it was, yeah. but now I'm kind of like going back to where I come okay, learning these like two and three chord songs that are, they were fun and nice. just like, so it's like yeah. kind of like a stepping back to go forward kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. would be, yeah, I, w I would do it. It's like the open mic thing or like the something at White Pine where it's not like, sure, like sure. The, the Ryan Hadley concert. It's <laughs> like, there's some other event going on and then yeah. there's going to be music and you know, I mean, I'll play it, something like that. Yeah, man. That would be kind of Sure, kind sure. Of fun, so. that, that would be cool. Just like, a, you know, very little pressure. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, man, because even playing the guitar and singing at the same time, would be that would be tough. Like, I'd suck at that so much because, um, like, I grew up playing piano, and it was always so much about, like, playing the instrument that I didn't even try to, like, sing over the piano f until maybe a few years ago. And I played mm -hmm. piano lessons from, like, four to, like, 18, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so, like, to me, it's always, like, wait, I can't put a hundred percent of concentration into the instrument. And then like, you know, sometimes the rhythm of the voice, it kind of breaks with the rhythm of the instrument. And like, I'm still figuring that out, man, but I don't know, maybe we could like, we could play for each other or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, get, getting used to the yeah. thing. And yeah. Cause when I like listened back to the recording that I did that last one, like there was, it seemed like there was like a, maybe it was like two different spots where it seemed like there, maybe there was like a glitch in the recording. And mm. I was like, certainly I didn't make that sound. Like it sounded like, like maybe yeah. like it didn't record for a, a beat or it yeah. skipped a second. And I was like, wait, mm. I, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. But maybe I did. 
man. But maybe, so there was like a couple, because it was like the same yeah. sort of uh, thing, same sort of glitch. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was just in the way, the way it recorded, mm. but, but it could yeah. be like, but there were other times where I thought it sounded like one thing and I listened back to the recording, yeah. not even, not talking about the one that I published, but yeah. I was like, Oh, I thought it sounded this way. But then when I yeah. listened back, it doesn't. And what can also throw people off is yeah. like, I hear my voice as it is now. Right. My voice to you sounds different. Right. Because my, my skull is vibrating my, um, yeah. So, Sometimes people, they will get surprised at what they sound like on the recording and think, oh, yeah. I, I don't sound like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You don't sound like what yeah. you think you sound like. Yeah. You sound like what the recording sounds like. Right. As long as it's yeah. a, a good quality re recording. Yeah. So that can, I think, can throw people off. Like, oh, I hate my singing voice or I hate my, my, like, well, it's mm -hmm. just, you're not, you're just not used to it. You're not used to it. Yeah. But that's what you sound like. That's what you sound like. So when you listen to yourself on the recording, that's what people hear. But when you hear yourself speaking and singing, not on the recording, that's not yeah. what other people hear. Yeah. That's kind of a weird thing to like understand and to, totally, to get, to get by. It's like, Oh, whoa. That yeah. Weird. Yeah. And I know like, like I remember when I was a part of that band, we, um, we had our high school band teacher record us so we could make like a little mini sampler. Mm -hmm. um, and that was real interesting because like he used audacity, which I know like you're a little bit familiar with mm -hmm. to, to edit the audio. And one thing that uh, he would do on all the vocal tracks was he's like, look, like part of the reason it sounds so different is actually because, you know, we're taking this, analog thing and making it digital mm -hmm. and, and not everything's perfect. You know, our equipment could be higher standard. Uh, so what he did was like, uh, you know, there's like a line, right. That represents the sound digitally. And he uh, put in these parameters into audacity to take the peaks, set a max peak allowed and a max like Valley allowed. Um, and what that did was it made the whole vocal track sound a lot cleaner and more hmm. like it actually did in reality. So there is something to be said of like, yeah, sometimes the equipment distorts it. Um, and I think it's pretty easy to do with audacity. You might uh, look into that. But. Yeah. I used audacity to record. If I do an audio only show, yeah. which cause I use zoom meeting for the um, speaking and the video but for some reason, even though it sounds fine with us speaking, if we yeah. start like playing guitar, it's, it sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's in the Zoom. I sent him a, a message. Some guy that I was talking mm -hmm. about that's coming on, he's, um, we haven't said a time yet, but he's done, I don't know if I want to say too much about him, but he's had like some programs like Guitars for Vets. Okay. And he's like, uh, uh, he sent me a message on LinkedIn about coming on the show. And so I started looking into him. I was like, Oh, this seems pretty cool. And then I was telling him, I was like, it'd be cool if you played, but I don't know how to make it sound good <sighs> yeah, yeah. because zoom doesn't sound good for music. And he said that he That's ran true. into the same thing, but mm -hmm. then he told me about this other setting. Yeah. And I was like, I'll, I'll check that out. But then I got to thinking about it. And I was like, I don't, I don't think he's right about that, but he, he might, he might be, but, yeah. It just takes like some figuring out how to, Yeah, man. but the audacity, I, I, I never did any editing with it. It was just mm. like hit the recording and to make sure the microphone yeah. level doesn't, the peak doesn't hit yeah. the top of the thing. Yeah. I mean, so I remember like, it being like, like he showed us how to do it on the computer mm -hmm. and it was like literally two boxes that he checked or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did it real quickly to each track and it helped so much, especially if there's any pops or like cracks It helped like get rid of some of that. And, um, yeah, yeah, man. the plosives and stuff, things what they call it, or something oh, okay. like, like that. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, a lot of like really good musicians like Audacity, and it's free. Mm. Yeah, so I think there is a paid version of it too. Okay, but you can record high quality stuff for free. Like I said, do the editing, and yeah. and you can send it out as yeah. MP MP3 and different kinds of files. So I, yeah, if people are like. Yeah wanting to record themselves and right. see what happens. You can record podcasts, you can record whatever with it. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of people so. do the DIY recording these days. It seems like where, you know, like you go into their little 
their little room in their house. Um, like uh, I have a cousin who does this because he does music production sometimes. And he has all these wooden diffusers on his wall. Mm. It's so cool to see because for one, it looks like a piece of art. Like he always paints them in neat ways or stains the wood. And what it is is just a bunch of different oddly shaped pointy pieces of wood stuck on one board. Mm. And, you know, the sound wave goes out like equally into the room. It radiates out. And when it hits this board, just because it's so jagged, it can break up the, the noise and, and dampen all this external stuff. Um, have you ever seen those before? Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. And one of my plans is to have, uh, I don't know if it'll be like the next gym mm. that I have that'll have a good place to do podcasts mm. and uh, yeah. music in them. And uh, yeah, one, one thing I would like for the, uh, future is to have a recording yeah. studio that's cool. everything's professional i mean the microphone that i'm using now is like yeah. one of the it's supposed to be one of the best ones you can get that plugs right into the you what's it called usb yeah um, thing and uh but yeah one of my plans is to get so what musicians can come it's going to sound professional awesome. so I can do I can do it with audacity and I have a few of them planned um, just working on the scheduling um, one of them is I don't know if I want to say who yet but hopefully I can get her on next week I do like a drummer storyteller thing okay. um, another guy at my I call my job job he's in been in a bunch of bands he plays mm -hmm. a bunch of different instruments but he was gonna come by play guitar sing tell some stories and stuff and uh and this other guy that i was talking about who sent me the message on linkedin it's like if i could just figure out how to make that sound good because it'd be cool yeah. for people to play but that mm -hmm. was like one of the ideas for me like changing the name from fitness and consciousness mm -hmm. to path notes is i wanted to take fitness out of it not yeah. that i didn't want to talk yeah. about fitness anymore right but it's like sometimes when I'd have people on, they'd be like, well, I don't, I was like, oh, yeah, I'd like to come on. I don't know how I can um, relate that to fitness though. And uh, like, well, well, the other word is consciousness, yeah. which includes everything. everything. Yeah. So it was just kind of like the word fitness. Hmm. just kind of like throwing me yeah, off a little too small bit. A box. Yeah. And, hmm. and uh, so I think path notes is, I like the name path notes. Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I stole it from this guy, <laughs> uh, Glenn Morris. He wrote a book called path notes of an American ninja master. Hmm. My first show that I did as path hmm. notes, I, I did give him credit right at the beginning of it. Um, but he, I looked it up several different ways. He doesn't call anything just path notes. The book okay. is called path notes of sure. the American Ninja master. I have the book. I have some of his other yeah. books. So it's not like path notes is his yeah. thing. It's right. just a small part of the title of his book. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I always liked that. I was like, path notes. That's cool. That's a cool name for a book. Yeah. And I've had the book for probably at least 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, but it's always been kind of like in the, yeah. um, cause I had the name in my mind, like path notes of the skeptical mystic was, yeah something I've used before. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I think I can take out the word skeptical because the mm. mystic is going to be like seeking the truth anyway. So you don't need skeptical and path notes of the mystic. And I was like, well, then am I calling myself a mystic? You yeah, know? It's like, yeah. I suppose I fit the definition, but I'm not like, Oh, here I am. This mystic. I'm, I'm a mystic. <laughs> right. You're like it's, that's weird. You're a pretty grounded guy. So, just start changes like path notes. Like, yeah, that ex that, that explains it. So like, yeah. how people on what path are you on? Yeah, and, like what? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so. It's unique, but it's, it's simple at the mm -hmm. same time. So you know, fitness and consciousness that's a mouthful, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I like what you're conveying with it. But like path notes is easier to say by like a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see how it, how it goes. It's uh, kind of strange to change the name of it after. Mm -hmm. I think this is episode 134, 130. That's awesome. So, so it's kind of weird to change the names so, after so many. Uh, but hmm. yeah, I think it works. Yeah, I mean, they're, the people who subscribe are still subscribed. Yeah, so it's, the show should be all in this. It, yeah. it may take me a while to change over all the, the logos. Gotcha. So it's still going to be listed as fitness and consciousness in, in some places. 
Mm-hmm. I'm in the process of changing it. Um, and like, what's my logo going to be? And I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll use like the real picture of our owl. Cool. Uh, I don't know if I want to be in it. We took some pictures yeah. yesterday where maybe I'll use myself in it. But it's like, do I want to be, I don't know if I want to be in the lo- in the logo or not. But the owl, which me represents, who are you? Mm. And like, what are you doing? And so that, that was like the message I got from our owl experience, which was really profound. So maybe I'll use the owl and then, I don't know, it's, I'll just kind of like figure it's it out. But place, yeah. So uh, I guess we can start to wrap it up. I know you got, you got to get to, you have some projects that you're working on today. And yeah. Uh, is there anything you wanted to, how do you, following it let's see any uh how do you say it yeah social any, media uh, and like, all that what? jazz yeah um, yeah um yeah feel free to follow me on instagram it's fearless sloth so there's no spaces um or you could check me out if you're in indianapolis and so you're looking for a personal trainer who who has uh this generalist perspective where um you know i can help you build a more resilient body that's prepared for nature or um, you can check me out on Instagram, send me a message through there. Um, yeah. And other than that, you know, uh, it's just really good to be here, man. It's always cool to have these conversations and I appreciate you doing this and, and putting India on the map in this way. Um, and the way that our little tribe has grown is really cool. I just love the direction it's going. Uh, for the longest time, I just felt like I was by myself thinking this way, doing these things. Mm-hmm. But now I know for sure that's not true. And, um, and I feel like it's made all of us a little better, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you feel that too? Yeah, it's really cool to see it. It, it turn, people turning out to our, our meetups mm-hmm. and everybody has the, their own strength and maybe they're not climbing trees. Maybe they're doing capoeira. Maybe they're... Yeah. Um, I'm not so good at handstands. Maybe somebody else is like they're doing handstands with you and I'm sure. kind of like maybe mess around with a couple, but that not, it's not really my thing. And so people are doing like, everybody just has their own strength. And then some people are just like, kind of like walking around with us too. Yeah. So, well, I, I don't want people to be intimidated by mm. our videos and stuff. Maybe like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's just this fun. Well, these yeah. people going out. There's no teacher. There's no uh, class that's being led. It doesn't cost anything. Right. Yeah. It, all these, like, there's no leader of this thing. It's, right, right. We just show up. There's usually, like, somewhat of a core group of us that shows up. It can be different people, some people. But, yeah, yeah. it's like, come out if you're in, in Indianapolis area. And if you're interested in that program that we're talking about at White Pine, uh, this is kind of like the first time it's been talked about publicly. Uh, it's going to be really cool. Probably start in the spring. Uh, I'm not sure when we'll start having registrations for that. I'm hoping mm. by the first of the year or something like that. Sure. Um, um, send one of us a message uh, to let us know you're interested. We can keep you updated on what's happening. And uh, if you're not in the Indianapolis area, start your own group. Maybe you're not into the tree climbing or rock lifting, but like, what do you like to do out in the woods? Maybe you like, maybe you want to learn more about plants. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, I want to learn more about plants. Uh, I got poison ivy. I don't, and I don't, I don't even know how, I don't know what even what, know what poison ivy looks like, but I have this book. It shows like poison ivy or or whatever. I know what poison ivy looks like. I used to get it real bad when I was a kid. So it's like this like main thing that sticks out to me if it's around Maybe you just want to learn more about trees. So yeah, you, you don't want to yeah. climb the tree. You just want to like, yeah. what kind of tree is that? Is that an oak tree? What kind of oak tree? Pine yeah. tree? What kind of pine tree? Maybe there's like whatever it is in your nature, like start a, a group. And like you're saying, like you felt like by yourself. I've kind of like had that same thing. Like, yeah. Like people aren't, not so many people doing what I want to do. And uh, so just like start your group if, if there isn't one and, yeah, it's as easy as, you know, getting on Facebook or Instagram and mm-hmm. creating a free account and then putting some real basic descriptions. And and mm-hmm. we just get on like, you know, a day or two before and say, hey, this is where we're meeting up. If anybody wants to show up, um, feel free to do so. And even if they don't come, you know, maybe they comment on it. And yeah. 
I mean, now I've made, you know, met uh, Caitlin and mm -hmm. JP um, and, and really Ethan, I didn't start hanging out with until uh, we started doing this stuff. It's like so many good friends have been made and um, you know, sometimes I'll refer like clients to those people or, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, it's just a cool thing to network with people that are into the same stuff as you. It's mutually beneficial for everybody. So like, you know, just have fun with it. Like we're just as goofy as we are intense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're yeah. super goofy. We're always doing funny stuff and making jokes and, and kidding around with each other. Um, so yeah, if you want to check that out, please look up the Indie Strength and Movement page and send us a message because uh, we don't care who you are, what you can do. You're welcome. Yeah, sounds good. Well, we will uh, catch you later. Peace, man. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Awesome.